Hello there, my zealots. This is Josh with Comanche today. So, I updated my drivers on my laptop, and now my my video monitor doesn't work, which is, or my video camera on my computer doesn't work, so I'm using my cell phone. But anyway, this guy named Aaron asks me a question, and he, we were, he was doing the research on the biblical canon. And he come up with, he basically didn't disagree with a lot of it, but there was one part of those things that is very difficult. And the last part of it is, the first part where Jesus Christ quotes from Scripture, that's very straightforward. The, the part where Jesus Christ um, quotes, you know what of books are of God because Jesus Christ quotes it. That's very straightforward. It's very easy. Uh, fulfilling the prophecies of the Temach, the Gospels, is very easy to figure that out. Uh, when it comes to writings of Paul, most of those are really easy to figure out. So in the Bible, there are the, the books of the Navim. And I'm going to show you something. So, so here's, here's that thing that we had last time. I don't know if you can see it over there, but there are, there's basically five gospels, or sorry, there are five books of the Torah, and there are five gospels, or prophecies of the Tzemach. And we know that the certain books fit with it, there's a couple missing, and there's one missing, but the rest makes, makes sense, right? So they mimic each other. There's the five Torah books, and then there's the five gospels, because there's the five prophecies of the Tzemach, and we know there's five books that are going to mimic or balance out the, the five books of the Torah. Well, we also know the Nevim has eight books in it. The Nevim has eight books in it, and Paul, we know, wrote seven books. We know this for a fact. We know that Paul wrote seven books. And here's where it gets interesting, because there are two books in question that we know are the authorship of Paul. And I'm going to write them on this thing. So we know that the books that are written by Paul, and this is, so what happens is that there's these there are these four books, okay? They are uh, 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians are in, they know that there is, um, they know that they are copies of each other, okay? One of them is of God, one of them isn't of God. One of them is written by God, another man copied it and wrote a new book. Ephesians and Colossians, one of those is of God, one is not of God, and one of them copied the book. Now, what's really cool about this is that we have this thing here. So we know in scholarship, okay, everybody that is a scholar knows, and I'm going to try and do this so you can see it, that Paul wrote 1 Thessalonians. So we're going to put first, we're going to get a pen that actually works. This one does not work. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's try this again. So we know that the Paul wrote... We know that Paul wrote 1st Thessalonians. Thessalonians. We know that for a fact. Okay, so 1st Thessalonians is written by Paul. Okay, that's a guarantee, right? Everybody agrees on that, that 1st Thessalonians is written by Paul. We also know that Ephesians... Ephesians is not written by Paul. Okay, can you read that there? That's unknown. Nobody knows who wrote Paul, and everybody knows that 1 Thessalonians is written by Paul. Now, the problem is that they are a copied pair of Ephesians as Colossians, and the copied pair of 1 Thessalonians is 2 Thessalonians. So, how do we know which one is of God and which one isn't? Okay, so what, somebody copied these pairs. So, it, all that's left then is we know that 2 Thessalonians must be the unknown, so we don't know who wrote that. And then the one that is the copied pair of Ephesians, because we know that this one is not of God, must be Colossians. Colossians. So that means that Paul must have written Colossians. And the reason we know this is because that, that leaves... When we, remember when I said that there are supposed to be only... There's eight books that are supposed to be written? Well, these four books are the ones... Or, these three books, Colossians, Ephesians, and 2 Thessalonians, are the ones that everybody's unsure about. However, they know that Ephesians is not of God. They knew that 1 Thessalonians is of God. And then with this graph or this chart, you can discern which is, which is of God and which of them isn't. So we know that this one is of God. We know that this one isn't of God. These two are copy pairs. These two are copy pairs. And because of this graph, we can tell that now, Colossians is the author, uh, or God is, or Paul is the author of Colossians, so therefore must be canon, which then fulfills the last slot, 
when it comes to the seven books or the eight books that Paul is supposed to be writing. Hopefully this chart simplifies things. This is the one that we know of. This is the one that we also know of. This one is obviously not of God. This one obviously is of God. We don't know about these two, but what, because we know that these are copy pairs and these are copy pairs, we can deduce the rest. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes it clear. I'm going to leave this up here so you can check. And this is the guarantee right here. Oh, sorry. This one's the guarantee right here. Let's do a check mark right there. That one's the guarantee. And this one is the guarantee too. And then with those two things, you can deduce the rest and which one is not of God and which one is of God. All right. You guys have a great day. Thank you, Aaron, for the question. Hopefully, this makes it a lot easier to see and understand. You great, have a great day. You know I love God because I love virtue, justice, and salvation. Um, yeah, good question. That's a really good question. It's hard to... It's, it's, hopefully, the graph made it make more sense. Trying to do it over text was really difficult. I hope you're blessed. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Uh, push the button. Stop.